Okay, today I'm going to go over how to read tarot cards with you. Um, just a note on that before we begin. You can read tarot cards however you want. You can read them intuitively by looking at the artwork and interpreting the art to look for symbolism and find meaning that way. Or you can do it by the book where a card comes up and you literally look up the meaning in the book. Every way uh, works. If you are reading by the book, however, um, or reading intuitively, there may be some cases where you need to change strategies uh, because you, you have to memorize the meaning. For example, if you have a Marseille deck, the minor arcana have um, little symbols but not full images. So you don't have a lot to go on. You can't read it intuitively. And with even the by the book method, if you don't have it memorized, you have to pull out your book and see what it says. So today I'm going to give you a few tips for reading the minor arcana um, without having to memorize them. Uh, if you do want to memorize them, this is also great because it will just give you a foundation. So instead of memorizing every card individually, you can look at the patterns that run across the numbers in each suit. So this is for minor arcana, which are, you know, a one, a two, page, knight, king, uh, queen. Not the major arcana, which are, you know, judgment or the world or the magician. So, so the first thing to go over is suits. So, suits. Um, these are obviously different from the suits you would know from playing cards, but they're related. So. Let's see. We'll do wands, cups, swords, and pentacles. So the wands look like clubs. Cups are like chalices, and uh, swords are like swords and pentacles look like coins and the wands relate to clubs and playing cards the swords relate to um, spades cups relate to hearts and pentacles relate to diamonds so just a little tidbit for you there and if you know about different elements it might help to know that wands relates to fire, cups relates to water, swords relates to air, and pentacles to earth. And that's just to say, if you aren't aware of elements, um, essentially that wands are spiritual, so any card that comes up for wands will somehow be related to the spiritual. Cups are related to the emotional, hence it being tied with the heart and playing cards. Swords to the intellectual. And pentacles to the physical. So diamonds representing um, wealth in a way. And a note that I have for myself on these is that this... Wands often mean to take action. It's a good time to take action, especially if you're doing a one-card draw. Cups mean listen to your gut. Swords mean 
make a plan. So just don't worry, use your head, make a plan. And pentacles, use common sense, which I know can be difficult sometimes. So that gives you an overview um, so that when you pull a card, a minor arcana, you can have an idea of where it's going uh, without even looking up the, the number or that card in particular. So next we have to go over numbers. but maybe a more neutral way is that they relate to change. And so this also shows that everything in tarot um, and life is cyclical, right? So you have an even number, stability, a period of stability, and then right after comes an uneven number, change. Likewise, every even number or period of stability has been preceded by some change that helped you arrive there. So... Now, regardless of suit, these numbers um, have some patterns that, that emerge if you look at them all. So I'll just give you some keywords that you can remember. Um, so if you know one is new beginnings, if you get the one of wands, that's a, spirit, a new spiritual beginning, or one of cups, or the ace rather, um, a new emotional beginning, swords, a new intellectual beginning, or pentacles, a new physical uh, beginning. So that's kind of how it can help you. So one, as I said, is new beginnings. So that which is about to take form. Then we have two. Um, so this is related to balance and also choice um, and duality, a crossroads, a decision that has to be made. Three um, is initial achievement. delay with the promise of success. Then we have four, which is um, a period of stability. It's an even number, um, but with that comes, instead of feeling comfort, it um, comes with stagnation. Then five is instability. This is true for all even and odd numbers, but these two especially. So instability and with that expansion. So 
Sometimes when we hear a period of stability, we think that that's a positive thing, and it certainly can be, but stagnation is not, right? Similarly, when we hear instability, we think that that uh, signifies instantly some kind of negative experience, but with that comes expansion, so the room to grow, um, the space to change, a, a new cycle, right? So then six, we have um, another even number, so relaxation, and also a period of adjustment. Or um, harmony, and um, with uh, the adjustment um, comes the ability to transcend difficulties. Then for seven, we have reflection. So looking at behind and ahead, reflection and discovery. So wanting something, right? If you think about the Seven of Cups card, often it is portrayed with seven um, cups, each with something different in it. Uh, some things good, some things bad. So reflection and discovery. Or also wisdom comes with the reflection. And um, I have as a note to myself here, faith in the unseen. Then we have eight, which is recognition and movement so positive change or um, the possibility for action nine we have um, completion in a way with Fulfillment. Uh, I think there's no right fulfillment. But it's an uneven number, and so it's the idea of um, completion and fulfillment there, but another pl plateau awaits. There's more ahead, and there's a looking ahead here. Whereas 10 is completion with abundance. So even though these are both completion, both towards the end of this um, long cycle of uh, building up to something, ten, with 10 comes abundance. Um, it's you're fully realized here. Then we have these guys, the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So a page is um, for conceiving an, an idea, conceive an idea. The knight is to act on an idea, an idea. And as I was saying before, if you have these notes, so you have page, um, conceive idea, and it's the page of wands, you have an idea of what it, it's um, talking about because it's conceiving a spiritual idea, right? Whereas if it's pentacles and a knight, you know it's acting on a physical idea. So then we have queen to nurture an idea and the king to develop the idea. So as these numbers, 1 through 10, um, build up towards some something big, so do these. So page through king, it's an idea that's just a thought, then you take action, you build upon that action, and you further enhance the idea later. And so this one is um, kind of passive. passive. This one is active, right? You're literally acting on the idea. Queen is also passive. And the king is active because you're improving the idea. Okay. So with this list, when you pull a tarot card and it's a minor arcana, 
you will have some idea of how to infer meaning from that card without having to, to look it up. Um, and this is especially helpful, as I was saying, for Marseille decks and other decks where you don't necessarily have an image or a depiction of the themes at hand on the card itself. So I hope you found this helpful. And um, again, these are just my notes, so feel free to adjust them as you see fit. Um, everyone comes to tarot with their own bag of tricks and you kind of take what works for you and leave what doesn't. So 